So yesterday I received some happy mail from Bridget who lives in Florida. And this was in response to my video on coffee dyeing my papers. And she sent me all these eucalyptus leaves. She showed me a picture of what she does with them when she dyes her paper and they leave an absolutely beautiful green color plus they smell fantastic and then she also included this little roll of it looks like the old uh, negative strips from film it's an acetate, so that will be fun to work with. So thank you, Bridget. I really appreciate these. Well, hello, everyone, and thanks for joining me today at Juanette's Crafting Corner. Wow, when I did my coffee staining paper, I got such an overwhelming response of positive comments. It, it was just fantastic. So I was glad to bring that to you guys. There are a bunch of people I want to thank you because if they take the time to write a comment about a video I do, then I feel it is my obligation to thank them for their comment. So indulge me with this list of people. Beverly M. Beverly, you always comment on my videos and I appreciate that so much. Carolyn's Craft Tree, Maggie, Bridget H, Cat Kim 1821, Rhonda, Glam Junk Journals, Sherry, my sister, again she was the one that asked me to do that video so thank you so much. Sonia, Cat in Paws, Sylvia, and Sylvia said that my hands looked like her grandmother's, and I felt that was a real compliment, because um, I am a grandma. Then Lori's Little Bit of This and That, Carolyn L., Melly K., Christina Creates, Linda W., K S Victoria F Teresa E who also lives in Arizona and then Catherine D like I said thank you so much for your comments so in today's video I'm going to do something a little bit different I'm going to be doing some sewing and you guys know that I have been following Ann Brooks 52 tag challenge and I believe this is tag number 41. And so she has given us the prompt to do bullion knots. So my idea is to do bullion knots as the hair down on this gal. Now this image is from Stamping Up and it is called Wonderful Moments, and it is this girl here. And I stamped her using Crumb Cake ink, so it's very light. And I figured that would be her skin color, and then I would just stitch her dress somehow. I outlined my tag. This is the size of our tags with these markers and the neat thing about them is when you iron over the ink it disappears so it is fantastic and the fabric I used is just this napkin that I think I probably bought at Deseret Industries like a Goodwill and then I cut it out and put it through a hoop so I'm going to start out by stitching her legs and I will use just an accru colored thread and I'll do that first and then I'll come back with you guys and show you where I'm at in the process. 
So as I'm stitching this, I notice my impression is not real crisp. And I think it's because it's on fabric. So what I'm going to do is also stamp it on a piece of paper so I can compare the images. Ooh, that's a lot of ink. That's a juicy ink pad. And this will just help me know where my image is. See, that's good enough because I can kind of see where her hand is. So I'll know better where to stitch things. So if you're going to stamp on fabric, stamp it on paper also, and then you'll be able to see your design a little bit better. Okay, I've finished stitching the outline of her legs and her hands, but I'm going to go ahead and stitch her dress so I can kind of get a feel of if I need to fill in these little spaces with thread. And what I've decided to do is use a running stitch, a whipped stitch. That will fill in her dress, I think, quite well. And what I'm going to do is use this DMC 208 and I'm going to do my stitches up and down along here. And then to do the whipping part, the weaving in and out, I'm going to use this metallic thread. I think they match fairly well. And then that will give the dress a little bit of sparkle. So basically, it's just a running stitch with space in between a little bit. And then when you put the metallic thread through there, it will give you a little bit of color. So let's see how that works. And um, hopefully it'll work. So I'm just going to come up. And then down and leave a space so that my metallic thread what did I do here what the heck how could that have happened already you know what since this is not this little part here is not part of the it doesn't matter I'm just gonna snip that instead of re, re um, threading there you go Okay, I must have got it caught there. Okay, there's the back. So then I'm going to leave a little bit of a space. And hopefully this will look good. So I've just about finished the first nursing journal. And I will do a flip through of it. The first one is black and ivory, like with just a touch of gold. And then the next three journals are going to be yellow, pink, and pur purple tones. But I have this new printer and I absolutely love it. It's an Epson ET15000. And it's one of those um, ones that you fill the tank with ink instead of the cartridges. And the ink really goes a long time, but as I guess there is something called a maintenance box where you, you're, when you clean your,
ink heads, any leftover ink goes in that. And if it's too full, then your printer won't work. So right now I'm without a printer. Many of you know I live in Gilbert, Arizona, which is part of Phoenix. I think the population is something like 6 million. So we've got tons of stores around and I cannot find that maintenance box anywhere. I had to order it online and even Amazon is gonna take several days. So I'm without a printer. And it's interesting how you never lived with a printer like years ago. And now, my gosh, you, you can't, you can't survive without your printer. Well, I guess if you're a, a journaler, you can't. But anyway, so that's why I'm sewing. I could make the, the covers to the journal, and I'll probably do that this afternoon. But I wanted to get this tag done because Anne does a new tag every Friday. And I don't want to get behind. And as soon as I'm done with these nursing journals, I'm going to start on my Christmas daily, um, daily planners, daily journals. And what I've decided for my personal daily journal is to do, um, accordion fold one I saw a gal and I'll try to link her video if I remember she used a lot of Tim Holtz stuff which he's fantastic um, and it was such a neat journal and so I think that's what I'm going to do this year for my personal journal. And then I will make a few to sell. Now, I will be selling the, probably all four of the nursing journals. Many of you know I've been a nurse 46 years. And even though it's a big journal, with lots of pages I have saved everything during my career and I think I need to make a 12 by 9 journal for my personal nursing journal so I'll make another one for me but if anybody is interested in purchasing one of those please let me know it would I think it would make a really nice Christmas gift for somebody if you have a family member who's a nurse. But anyway, I'm gonna just continue sewing this and then I'll come back with you guys with the weaving and we'll go from there. Okay, I have finished doing my running stitch through her dress and what I decided along the edge of the dress is to fill it in completely her hair is going to come down like I said with the bullion knots and I may have to fill this in too and what I've decided is like I said I'm using the darker color of metallic thread to weave through the dress. And then if you see the picture here, she has a little bit of a belt here. And what I thought I would use for that is this lighter one. So hopefully it will work, but I've come up through the bottom here and I'm just gonna start weaving in and out of those stitches. And if I have to do a little bit of filler, I can. I 
I should have gotten that stitch a little bit closer, but who knows what it'll be like when it's all said and done. It may look good and it may look terrible. Oops. Now, what I have found, and you guys probably have found the same thing, is when you actually stitch with metallic thread, it's a booger. It's, it's not easy to do. So I'm just going to go in and out. And I can tell now, like with this stitch right here, I went too tight, so it's a little bit difficult for me to get my needle underneath there. I should have gone a little bit looser there. But I think it's going to be okay. I will stitch a little bit, and then I will come back with you guys, and we'll see how it's looking. So I'm very pleased at how her dress came out. It almost looks like it's a knit dress. And so now I'm going to use this lighter thread to, like I said, stitch in a little bit of the belt and a stitch, in, stitch in her shoes. And then we'll go from there. And I will just probably do... Um, probably just a straight stitch. Again, with this metallic thread, it's very difficult to do French knots because some French knots across there would look pretty. But anyway, I'll let you know when I come back what I did. Okay, so what I did was I took a little bit of this lighter purple and I just did a few stitches here to represent a belt and then I did a couple of stitches here to represent her shoe. It was a little bit difficult and then I'm going to take, um, is it this color? No, it's a little bit darker. Which one did I get? But it, similar, yeah. What number is that? 731 and I'm going to do a little bit of stitching down here to represent her standing on some ground. So I'm just going to kind of go in and out. I'm still debating on whether or not I'm going to fill in this. I'm afraid if I fill it in, it's going to make her uh, legs look too heavy. I wish I'd have made this waist a little bit smaller, although... With her being a little bit bigger, that's more of a normal waistline. But it's just a little bit smaller there in the picture. And then I don't know whether to do something there or if it'll, it'll look funny. But I'm just going to do a few stitches here to represent the ground so she's not just standing on air. And it's going to be like grass. I have always loved sewing. I can't remember if I told you guys or not, but I think I started sewing maybe the age of, I don't know, 10 or 11. And remember... We used to be taught sewing in home economics in um, in middle school. I remember taking it in middle school. I still have the bread recipe from the home ec teacher that that taught us that. But I'm just doing some in and out stitches, and then I'll do just a couple of little blades to make it look like grass. But the proof is going to be the bullion knots.
for the hair. It's gonna make it look like curls. And I still haven't decided quite which um, color to use. I do have a variegated brown, which I think would look nice. It would look like her hair had highlights in it. So I might, I might pull that out and see what that looks like. But I'm going to finish stitching this ground and then I'll be back with you guys. Okay, so I finished the grass underneath her feet. I'm still debating about this. I probably will stitch that. But here's my dilemma for the hair. Hmm. Um, this thread here, RZM, I think it's called Razzle something or another. I ordered it from Sue Spargo and it's slippery, so it's really good for bullion knots because, you know, you wrap them around and pull it through. I just don't know. Let me contemplate a little bit. <laughs> I'll be back with you guys. Okay, so what I did is I outlined the image a little bit for where her hair will be and I want it to be wispy here so that's what the direction I'm going to do my bullion knots and like I told you this is called RZM11 from Sue Spargo's shop and so let's just start with our little bullion knots and go from there now what I'm going to do is start at the bottom here and I'm going to have a couple of layers so you're going to come up through your fabric and then go back close to where you were before, where you had uh, started. And then you start wrapping your thread. And I'm not quite sure how many wraps I will need to do. Uh, let's see, that's three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We'll do ten. Now, um, this thread, the reason it's so good for doing bullion knots is it is very slippery. So I wrapped it around, then you hold it in place, try not to stick yourself, and you pull your needle through. And I've got it kind of bunched up underneath here. Okay, you pull your needle through the rest of the way, and then you see how those knots kind of make a little, like a little, like worm looking thing. And so then, and now I, I see because it is fairly loose, I could have maybe done, um, a few more wraps so then you go down close to that spot to anchor it and because I'm going to do several in different lengths and on top of each other we'll just go there I want to be close enough to the dress, but not coming up through that thread. So again, come up. This one, I'm going to go all the way to the edge. And then
back through if I can find the right spot yeah there we go and I might do a few more wraps this time I can't remember if I told you I'm using a regular size bullion needle they're longer than your standard needle so then I'm going to wrap it one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. We'll do that. Then hold it in place. Pull your thread all the way through, and then when you release it, you'll have that bound up, twisted up there, and just pull it close, and you'll have your knots there. And that, I am hoping when I do a bunch of them, will make it look like she's got long, pretty little curls. But I don't want to go over where my outline is of her hair because I don't want her to have too big of hair. So I'm going to continue doing that in some rows and some small ones here, a couple of small ones, then larger ones up here, and I'll be back with you guys. Okay, I finished all the bullion knots to represent her hair. And I think it came out quite nice. It's very similar to the picture in which her hair is flowy. Maybe I could have done a couple of more here, but I was thinking it would make it way too fat. And now I'm going to show you those pins. Look at, isn't that fantastic? How you just iron that. And that, oops, I should have cut it first. Dang it, rats. Because now I need to know where to cut. Ah! Dang it, why didn't I do that first? Well, let's cut across here first because I know that that's my bottom. Yeah, I should have cut first and then ironed. I suppose I can mark it again real quick just on the couple of spots where it needs to go so I don't mess it up okay that's the center and I'll just make a little line there and a little line there and then I know that's where I got to cut up to Now let's see if I can do it in a straight line, which most of the time I can't. Yeah, that's gonna be okay. And then just let me go across here. Yeah, that's okay. And then I can iron just a little bit there to get rid of that. There. Well, I'm very pleased with that. Thanks, Anne. That was a beautiful challenge. Tag number 41, beautiful bullion knots. And now I, I will attach it there. And it will go on my ring. Oh, let me just show you real quick my other ones. I didn't update you. I think there was a couple that I had done that I didn't film. Uh, this one was uh, something yummy. 
and so the yumminess was the the thread and the fabric this is a hundred percent wool fabric and then some of the threads are from steph francis some are from sue spargo and this was a new stitch that i had learned i kind of messed it up there but here it was really nice and here it came out really nice what was the name of that stitch oh I can't remember. I tell you, my mind is just going. And then these two tags were the applique. I can't remember if I showed you them. One was the applique and then the reverse applique, or the applique and then the reverse applique. So taking the image and uh, um, using one section of the reverse, you know what I mean. Oh my gosh. And these, these two definitely are my least favorite of all my tags. But anyway, that's it. Thanks for joining me, guys. And I will see you next Monday. Bye. So you thought I was going to let you go. So as I was gluing it down, I thought, you know, it needs a little something around here. And I had this little bit of lace just sitting on my craft desk from working on my journals and I added that and I think that just finished that tag off. Just, this may be one of my favorites. Anyway, again, thanks for joining me guys. Talk to you later, bye.